I Got the Hell Out does contain explicit content that might not be suitable for some listeners, such as children, those that easily get offended, and we do recommend that listeners at work put your earbuds in if you have co-workers around. And if you like the show, please spread the word by telling as many people as you can. We'd also appreciate if you would subscribe, rate, hopefully with five stars, and review the podcast on iTunes. You can find us there as well as on Stitcher and Overcast. You can follow us on Twitter at Was In A Cult, on Facebook at I Got The Hell Out, and on Instagram at I Got The Hell Out with an underscore after each word. You can contact us through our website at IGotTheHellOut.com. All right, guys, we had our first major mess up, and we're going to apologize in advance, so we lost about 25, 30 minutes. Yeah, we recorded the entire episode. It went really well, and then we went to re-listen to some parts of it to edit it. It was gone. It was flatlined. 25 minutes were just completely gone. So I think we say this at some other point in the episode, but we're just apologizing now that if we tell a story twice, that would be why. Or if something's missing. Yeah, so if something flows, or I should say doesn't flow very coherently, that is why. Because we don't know really what we said, what we didn't say. It's just a mess, so we're apologizing now before we even start. Enjoy the episode. (laughs) Another shit show. (laughs) Hi guys, it's me, Dad. And Laura. And it's another wonderful episode of Of I Got Got the the Hell hell out. Out. This is episode number 41. Yeah? Yeah. What do you have? You first... Uh, well, um, let's give the Kool-Aid recipe. Okay. okay. Right off the bat. Y- yeah. This is the sorcerer's surprise. Okay. And what's the surprise? The surprise is it's whatever your friend gives you drink it. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> it's any flavor Kool-Aid that you've got. Okay? okay. And you add in your adult poison. Okay. Okay. Um, if you're in Colorado or Washington, hi, Drizzle and Tony. Hi guys. Um, you can enjoy the ganja with it too. Oh, well, there you go. So, yeah, you know. Well, you can legally enjoy it. Some other people might want to illegally enjoy it. Uh, Well, do you know in Amsterdam, you have to be a citizen now. They made it so that if you're visiting, you're not allowed. You have to show ID. Really? Yeah. Yeah, so. Oh, that's really weird. Well, no, because there was too many people getting busted and popped and all kinds of stuff. So they just made it. You have to be a citizen. Oh, wow. I, I wonder if their tourist trade went down. No, there's people still going to the red light district. Who knows? Um, moving on. Okay. Okay. Um, Charlotte Rose, she lives in the UK, and she wanted to be a member, and I thought she was a robot. But she's not a robot. Um, she listens on her way to work in the UK, and she still has no idea what Kool-Aid is, and she spelled it C-O-O-L. Um, oh. Hi, Charlotte. Um, if you, Charlotte, if you post your address on here, I will send you. Well, not link. post it. Like, you won't post it. I won't post it, but it'll get to me, you know. Right. And I'll just delete it. But if you send me your address, sweetheart, I'll send you Kool Aid. Remember the anthrax scare? That's right. From That's the last right. time I sent Kool Aid to the UK? That's right. Yes, yes, yes. And Athena E, again, you look like a robot. I'm sorry. I, I can't let you in. Give, give me a better answer. You give me the same answer every time. Um, well, let's see, where else are we going with this? Well, well, while you're doing that, I want to give a thank you to Alexandra G, who was just getting caught up on episodes, and she had some really kind words about my dad's passing, so thank you so much. Yes, That yes, really yes. meant a lot. Always does, doesn't it? It does. It really does. And Carrie is re-listening to some of our old episodes and making food, and look, she made the mini pierogies for yeah! her and her kiddos. I love the mini ones, because you can basically just cut them in half. They're two bites. You know? So. Hey, mini pierogies, regular size, it doesn't matter, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, and remember we talked about saying R-O-C-H, and we couldn't figure out how it was pronounced. Oh, yeah. Um, my my ex-friend member, hi, E, um, she said St. Rock is pronounced rock. Oh, And okay. he's the patron saint of doggies. So she remembers that from catechism all these years ago. So. Oh, my gosh, I remember catechism. I never that didn't was do any such of that a crap. joke. I did, but it was such a joke. And you know, we talk about a lot of things here. Someone chimed in. Um, there is a menstrual patron saint. No, there's not. Yes, there is. And who might that? be? That would be Saint Maurice Catherine. Oh, Saint Maurice Catherine's the one that let me know that. Oh. <laughs> so it's not Saint Maurice Catherine. No, Catherine, our, uh, one of our listeners. So why would a male be in charge of? 
your menstrual cycle? I don't know. Why is That's why goofy. does our government control everything and there's no women on the panel? We're not getting into this. We're not going to get into We're that. We're not going to get into this. So, yeah. And um, our resident Aussie, Kuda, um, she says my mom is gorgeous, which she is. Um, she says she sounds really sweet, but also like a bit of a badass. I'd love to hear from, more from her if she's keen to share. Thank you, Kuda. Oh, we're going to have her on again sometime. We'll have her on again. And um, to all my Aussie friends out there and Kuda, I, I stayed up late last the other night watching a really weird um, Tom Selleck movie from 1990 called Quigley Down Under. What? Quigley Down Under. Oh, it was a movie? It was a movie. It starred Tom Selleck. He was the only basic American except for this crazy woman. Okay? And what was it about? This guy gets hired by, I guess, the Australian mafia for some reason. <laughs> and it's okay. it's Tom Selleck, and he shows up, and he's a badass, and he rescues this woman from being sold into white slavery, I guess. I don't know. Okay. But it was all Australian people and indigenous people, and it was, oh, there were cool. kangaroos and everything. Nice. So, yeah. Kuda, let me know if you've seen the movie or if it was what filmed is, near you. What, Quigley? Quigley. Down Under. Down Under. Yeah. All right. And pull it up. It was funny as all get out. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Um, what else? You're like scribbling furiously over there in your book. I ain't scribbling anything. I'm just crossing out what we, we've talked about. Okay. Um, okay, our meetup is this Friday night. Okay. It was it the 16th? Yeah. Yeah, Friday the 16th. Find us on the Facebook page. Yep. And it's at 8 o'clock. And just come on along and we can bullshit, have some drinks, have some fun. And we hope to see a lot of you people out there. And also, um, Danny and Zach from Working Stiff's podcast will be there. So you can meet them, chat with them, and we'll just have a good time. I'm planning on getting a little early and eating with you. Oh, so am I. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go early and eat because they have really good wings. Laura, do you know what you just said to me? I know. You cook wings all the time, but I don't, so I'm going to go get my garlic parmesan wings. I cook like 200 at a time, and I make, you know how many garlic parm wings I make? <sighs> Those are the best. See, if you ever came to my house, you know, I could bring garlic parm wings home. But no. At some point, I will. How long have I known you? I know. I know. And we're going, hey, by the way, we hit our year anniversary on Halloween. That's where we came up with the idea. Oh, I was like, we haven't been. Okay, we came up. Yeah, that's right. I worked for you on Halloween. That's right. And that was the deadline for your, one I of your bucket have, list things. I wanted to have a podcast. And it was like the 11th hour and 57th minute. Really freaky. Yeah. So really freaky. high five, girl. We hey, girl. A, we got a podcast. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Now, let's see. We decided we were going to do a fun episode on drugs and alcohol. Yeah, we are. Yeah, the cult's we are. view of that. Um. Well, outwardly, I would have to say they were very much against it, but... Like, in speaking to ex-members since I left, there was a lot of shenanigans going on behind closed doors. And all I want to say, guys, is why didn't you let me in on it? Oh, you mean you were talking to ex-members and they were talking about parties they were having? Or or doing or, things that they shouldn't be doing. And you, you weren't invited. I wasn't Aww. invited. I guess I look like the narc type. <laughs> I don't know. You do not look like the narc type. Because, I mean, I know from the first feast, I mean, I... I think I only weighed like 96 pounds. I showed you. Right. And my mom said I was doing things I shouldn't have been doing. Yeah. yeah Where well, are you? You join a cult and all of a sudden you get real sober real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you said that during the feast you were allowed to drink. Well, we were, me, me and my ex were doing other things we shouldn't have been doing. Oh. So, yeah. Being a bad girl. I was a bad girl all the way up until we moved there. I just didn't do it in front of him. Gotcha. You know? And then when we moved there, I had a whole bunch of shit stashed. And, you know, you really don't think about it much, but then your stash is gone and you're going through everything you own and there's nothing left. And then you realize, holy shit, I don't, I'm in a whole other state. The only people I know are uppity cult members. Where do I find uppity. them? Uppity. Well, <laughs> uppity. I, I mean, even like my friends and stuff, I couldn't go up to them and go, hey, do you know where I can find any blah, 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 you right. know? And they had turned me in, first of all, for looking in the first place. 
and they probably would have thought I was trying to like set them up. Like suppose my friend did do blah, 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 but mm-hmm. no one else knows. Gotcha. And suddenly her paranoia shoots through the roof because they're thinking that, you know, they're sending me to test her out. Okay. You know and then I mean? everybody would have been in counseling. I don't know. Maybe we would have had a big party. I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know of any of the women, but I do know a lot of the men were doing um, stuff off of the back of the toilet seats in the ah. bathrooms during services. I guess that was that their way to cope. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, from the sounds of it, people did need a way to cope with those services. There was a lot of drinkers out there. I mean... Well, little man would cause anyone <laughs> to drink. You know, there's a lot of shit going on in my life, and I, you know most of it. And mm-hmm. I always tell people, and people wonder why I drink, in all honesty. And that would be why, because of the crap going on. Exactly. It's my reward for getting through another shitty day, you know? And By the way, not all my days are shitty. I try to make them happy. Do you know what I mean? Right, but sometimes stuff happens, and it just, no matter how you want them to turn out half decent, it just doesn't. What really sucks is, is sometimes as a parent, you can't do anything to help your kid or your spouse or your friend. Right. I mean, there's just literally your heart is breaking because you want to help and there's not a damn shit and thing you can do. Right. Or sometimes you might be able to help, but like they have to learn the lesson their own on their own. Uh, yeah, they're not going to learn the stove is hot. That whole tough love thing, which really sucks, but got to do it. Yeah, but, um... Anyway, back in the beginning, there, I mean, a lot of our second tithe went to the liquor store. A lot of people (laughs) did, okay? (laughs) Hi, guys! Um, and I never realized, like, in speaking with other ex-members, you know, since it's this show's come out that, you know, the cult knows and they listen, so I can let the ex-members in and they can listen... But the amount of us that drink at the end of the day is just astronomical. And there's a lot of similarities in ex-members, I guess, in because of the things that we went through. Mm-hmm. Kind of like the lingering. Um, I have one ex-member who cannot get enough shellfish to eat. Every time, oh, wow. Every time they go out to a restaurant, they're ordering shrimp they're ordering lobster they're ordering just because because they can or it, it, you, you, you know me and my milk addiction i always bring right. like a half a gallon with me in my cute little quart size mugs mm-hmm. they're miniatures um and everybody at work laughs at me because i take like yesterday i worked 10 hours and i took three quarts of milk with me and that's you know coffee milk and beer so i have to switch over at some point, from the coffee to the milk, and, you know, when you're working, you can't really drink beer when you're working. I mean, I work you, in a pub, but... So you won't be bringing milk Friday night? No. Well, <laughs> you know, I, probably not, because it depends on where I'm going. Like, if I'm going to Eaton Park, I'll take my damn little quart of milk in with me, because I'm you not... You won't order it? I'm not... Paying like three fifty for a teeny tiny glass of milk. That but you a whole bring gallon. your own milk. Yes. Are you kidding me? No, I'm cheap. You bring your own milk into Eaton Park to any restaurant. Oh, for God's sake! Seriously? Yes. And what do you do? You just like this, plunk it up on the table. This 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 all started back in the cult because we couldn't drink milk from right. a restaurant. Okay. So, and I have to drink milk with my meals. Have to. What do they say to you when you, like, plunk that on the table? When I go in, it very rarely does anybody ever say anything to me. Or do you ask for an empty glass? No, I just chug it. You don't like it. You chug it out of the court thing. <laughs> oh, my God. But the few times anybody has ever said something to me about bringing my own beverage in, I let them know that I'm on a special medication that I have to drink it with the milk in a certain amount and it has to be drank down with a meal and it's already pre-mixed. That's why I brought it with me. That's a good bullshit story. I'm a good bullshitter is all I can tell you. When I have to, I am a good freaking bullshitter. Oh And my to this God. day, I will take my quart of milk in, but you know, I'm not going to bring it into the pub, I don't think. You know. Oh, how funny would that be? I would laugh my ass off. Oh, would you take a picture of me sitting there eating? 
With my cute little court with oh, me? You know I would. Okay, well then I'll bring you my... You know I would. I that would bring... be posted so fast. I will bring my quart of milk then. We'll even do a story of you chugging your milk And I'll even bar. hold it like this. <laughs> You know, and I always <laughs> pose and do shit like people can actually see us. And oh it, my God. I would laugh so hard if I was at a restaurant and I saw somebody bringing their own milk, like chugging out of the... It's a little quart. It's cute. It's so funny. It's not like I have the whole How gallon. did I not know this? How do you not know what? I'm not paying three fifty oh for a little tiny 16 ounce glass of milk when I can oh have my... a 32 ounce <laughs> little ju- mighty jug. <laughs> And, you know, according to, you know, HIPAA and shit, they're not allowed to ask you what medication oh or anything. I they just have lo- to I, But I also you. love how you have a bullshit story for it about medication. I have medication. a bullshit story for everything. Oh, oh my God. God. I could be at a flea market and, like, my mom, the saint that she is, she should be a Saint Nancy, um, she makes um, blankets for, like, Project Linus and things like that for, mm-hmm. you know... Anyway, there was a whole box of material, and the, and it was like towards the end of the flea market or yard sale. When stuff's marked was. down. Well, they weren't gonna mark it down. They were gonna mark it. They wanted a dollar a piece for the material, and there was probably like fifty pieces in there. And then they were gonna mark it down to half. So you know, I didn't actually tell a bullshit story, but I did tell them that you know my mom makes these blankets for these little babies, and she makes these NICU buddies for little newborn babies that are in the NICU, Aww. and I got the whole box for a dollar. Nice. But, you know, there was no fibbing there. But she really does, though. I know. Okay, real quick, I owned a resale shop, and I was going past a hotel that was getting all new mattresses. And in retrospect, they could have been infested with bed bugs. I have no idea. (gasps) But I got, like, 200 queen-size sets for free. How the hell did you lug those away? I have a trailer. Oh, for God's sake. It took me probably 20 trips but, you know, you know how many box springs and mattresses you can sell for $25 a pop and people will just snap them up? Used mattresses? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. You're okay. looking at me with disgust. Okay. But do you know what people have been doing on those mattresses? I had in my shop a moldy, nasty mattress Stop. that needed to go Stop. away. Stop. Okay. And a woman came the in story needs to and go wanted away. to buy it. She needed it for a school play. I gave it to her for $2. My mother's mouth was dropped. So is mine. Well, it was meant to be thrown away. It just hadn't gotten to the dumpster yet. Anyway. Ooh. But yeah, I talked my... I went in and asked the, the manager about the mattresses and gave a couple of little fibs here and there. And <laughs> really? Yeah. They were happy to be gone. They. She told what? me she was happy yeah, to be I'm gone sure. because they were going to have to pay to have them removed. And here you are with your trailer. Yep. Hold them all Hold away. Them. <laughs> oh Sold them all. Oh, good for you, though. You made Sold a profit. I made a damn good profit. I wish I could open another store here, but anyway, um, we're talking about drugs and alcohol. Yes. So this pamphlet that I have is from the year 2002. Oh, I was still there. And it is... In misery. It is the teens discussion pamphlet. <gasps> I don't think I read that. I don't even know where I would have gotten that. Where did you, you found that in the box? I of found that in the pa- box of propaganda, propaganda box. I did. It says, okay, this is for the teachers. This is like telling them what they're going to be explaining to the teens. Because um, after you read something, that automatically makes you a licensed counselor absolutely. and teacher. Absolutely. Yes. It sure does. It says, tell students that today they will be discussing the harmful effects of drugs and alcohol. Talk to students about how God does does allow drinking in moderation, but drunkenness condemns his law. Ask students if they have ever seen people who have overindulged in alcohol. How did that person conduct themselves? Did you have the same respect for that person after seeing them? Hmm. I will turn it over to you. Wow. Um, I don't see my kids were tiny and any classes that were geared towards teenagers and stuff. I, I had no part of. But I can tell you that, you know, our first feast that we lived there and, you know, like I said, Kenny likes nice things. He has to have the best of everything. Mm -hmm. And of course we lived there. So we ended up um, purchasing a trailer on the corner of the playground. Right. And our place became, well, that was our first trailer because of course we had to upgrade to the, you know, single wide. Okay. At one point. But. Our place was always a place that people would flock because, you know, Kenny made money and the liquor store got a fair amount of our second tithe. And it was so funny because um, 
pedophile elder used to hang out with our group. And he was so pissed off one night because he had to go and do something. And this was about the time Goldschlager came out. Okay. What the hell's Goldschlager? You've never heard of Goldschlager? Is it a beer? No, it's a liquor and it has tiny little flakes of gold floating in it. Real gold. Real? What? Yeah. Anyway. Okay, go ahead. Um, he made us promise to not drink all the Goldschlager and he'd be back as soon as he could. Well, you know, there's 10, 15 of us sitting around, and the bottle just kept going around. This was back before, you know, all the DNA, and, you know, you can't share Oh, things. you can transfer DNA, and, like, when your DNA will become somebody else's DNA. Yeah, like, right. Laura, you can't go resale shopping because, you know, the woman who owned that coat before you... Her DNA will... She, she, was, she was a child beater and abuser, and suddenly you're wearing her coat. It has her DNA cells on it, because, of course, she didn't wash it or anything, you know. Mm -hmm. And suddenly you take on her her attributes, and suddenly you're beating your children and starving them and chaining them to walls. Yeah, we learned that in pharmacy school, sure. <laughs> anyway, pedophile elder got called away, and lo and behold, you know, 10, 12 people in their early 20s, the bottle of Goldschlager got dry. Oh, I was just going to say it was didn't a fifth, last. Okay. So we decided to play a nasty joke on him. And somebody had um, menthol cigarettes that had their, their um, inside the, the foil's gold. Okay? So a couple people meticulously was making fake little pieces of gold. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay? And then I don't remember. What did you fill it with? I think it was uh, water, white vinegar. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, I don't remember. A whole bunch of nasty ass shit is all I remember. And he was so excited when he came back and there was a half a bottle left and he couldn't understand. And there was the gold wrapper floating in it. Little, Little tiny, tiny bits of the gold wrapper was floating in it, yes. Oh, oh there was um, the clear liquid hand soap in there also. <laughs> um, oh, my God. We were throwing in anything clear that we could think of that would make oh him vomit. Oh, my God. And he comes back and he was so excited. And we, it was, in retrospect, we were all so quiet sitting around the campfire. And he had been gone for two hours, you know, and he had planned on being back in 20 minutes. Well, of course the bottle's gone in two hours, right. dude. And his eyes light up real big. He sees that half the bottle's there, and I forget even who said it. They're like, oh, yeah, we saved it for you, dude. Did he drink it? He sat down. The, the look in his eyes was priceless. And he didn't just, like, you know, get it to it. He, he took swallow, swallow. <gasps> Before, like, the taste registered. Before the taste registered, and he was spitting and spewing and screaming. Good for you, pedophile elder. At all of us. and we That's were, what you get. We were all pissing ourselves in laughter. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, this was back in the good old days when it was fun. But When that's what you did to pedophiles. We didn't know he was one back then. But I can tell you, he did pick all his eyebrows out. He didn't have any eyebrows. Ew. When he when he'd talk to you, he'd stand no, there no, and stop. pick. Look, I'm doing no, it. Stop, stop. But, yeah, he had no eyebrows. And Ooh, what a creepy ass looking guy. <sighs> anyway, um, he was groomed to be a pedophile. It, it goes in cycles. You know? Oh yeah. Um, I, I feel bad for all of the children that have been abused out there. Um, keep on surviving, guys. You know what I mean. That's about all you could really say. Is just yeah. But and hopefully you're getting the therapy you need. Yes, and a lot of alcohol. <laughs> Contrary to what this says. I, I used to love Passover because I could get drunk at Passover. Because you have to drink three glasses of wine. Oh, I didn't know three glasses. Yeah, well, you got to lean to the left and drink. And you got to lean to the right and drink. And then you got to sit straight and drink. I, I don't remember. There's a whole Passover ceremony that we'll do in the spring when Passover okay. comes. But and we'll post pictures of us leaning to the left drinking. And leaning, leaning to, to the, the right. right. <laughs> Maybe Sammy will be home and we'll give her the children's part that she can read. There we go. What's creepy is they still set a place for pedophile elder, but we're not going to talk about that right now. No. Let's, no. let's just skip over that. No. A little creepy ass no Back eyebrow to alcohol. guy. alcohol. Okay. Now this is number two. Um, then there's something they had to read called, When Alcohol Became My Voice. So apparently what? whatever that is, they, yeah, they had to read that. Then ask students if they or anyone they know has ever become so drunk that they could not remember anything. Allow two or three students to answer. Now, Debbie, have you ever had so much to drink that you cannot remember anything? Um, I, I don't remember, You played the fifth. <laughs> I, 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 I don't remember. Um, I, um, 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now this one I really like. Okay, this is something else that they had to read. Have you ever drank that much that you don't remember the next day? No. I can honestly say no. I'm boring. What? Nothing. <laughs> don't look at me like that. God, I called you last night and it was like 10 to 8 and I'm like, what are you doing? You're like laying here on the couch getting ready to go to sleep. Hey, I go to bed early. Read. I have my sleeping problems. I go to bed early. How I'm going to like last Friday night when we're at this get together is beyond me. I'll keep poking you. Seriously. I'll jab you with my pen. <laughs> I'll bring my stabby stick. Stab, you can like, stab. no, jab me with your jug of milk that you bring. <laughs> <laughs> like hit me over the head with it. <clears throat> okay, are you ready for this new thing that they had to read? Yes. Okay, it is called the three D's of drinking. Drinking, drugs, and doing it. Oh my God. <laughs> and doing it? And doing it. <laughs> okay. Oh, because when you get drunk, you, you drink, you get I guess drunk, your, your and then you're doing it. With yeah, your inhibitions are lowered. Next to you. I suppose so. Because um, that, you know, god awful, ugly person you'd never touch to begin with is suddenly just going to look at you and go, oh my God, I want you. Well, what was that called? Beer goggles or something? Yeah. Like, right? Yeah. I'm trying to see here. Okay, guys. Uh, not really sure if we're recording at this point because it's not really making lines, is it? Well, we had our first major screw up here. Um, <laughs> we just recorded our longest this, episode ever. This is like right in the middle. People are probably like, what the hell are they talking about? We just recorded our longest ever episode and we're piecing it together to get to ready to publish it and there's 25 to 30 minutes that didn't missing. record it just was like a straight line sort of like on one of those heart monitors that's like you're dead a straight line yeah for like, well those 30 minutes of our podcast was dead yeah well it was our first major screw up i'm assuming because you know i did look over at one point and saw the thing running but it was running white it wasn't see how the, the numbers are red mm-hmm it was running white. You should have said something. Not that I would have known what it meant, but... Uh, yeah, so, guys, uh, welcome to the shit show. We have no idea what we talked about for those 25 minutes. It flowed really nice, and we... it's gone forever. Oh, my God. It did. It flowed so nicely. But well, we were talking about... We left drinking off, drugs I think, and doing it. Think drinking drugs and doing it. Okay. And they said to read it, but we don't have it to read, unfortunately. No, and that's when you flipped over to the other pamphlet. So now, yeah, we're going to flip over to the other pamphlet. And we could have talked about it already, for all I know. Exactly. And this, this um, I had you look, and it was published in 91. And, right. Uh, I think this was the original pamphlet that Kenny um, received from his dad. And before you even joined the right, fall. and okay. it was he got this box of literature like two months before the first feast, and he went through them and he was reading some of them and this and that. And I come home from work one day and he has this book in his hand, and he's stubbing out his smoking material, and he says I never should have read this, and I said why, and he says because I can never smoke again. And I'm like, what? Um, so, yeah. Well, that's because the title of it is Drugs and Drinking, What Do the Scriptures Really Teach? Exactly. And there's a really nice drawing on the front. It has... Budweiser. A can of Budweiser, some prescription vials, a hypodermic needle. $100 bill rolled up with some lines. And a razor blade. And let's see, a marijuana leaf. Ooh, shot glass. Shot glass. A baggie of something. Of some white powder. Some, some substance. Yes. And a joint. Okay. How do you know what a joint is? Everyone knows what a joint looks like. <laughs> so now it says, At this time we are in the last days, and this prophecy has truly come to pass. Much of today's society is highly engrossed in pleasing themselves. And that's all in capital letters. One of the tools used by today's society to please themselves is drugs. No. Yeah, according to them. Recreational yeah. drugs. Could be, could be prescription drugs, could be recreational drugs. I don't know, but I'm sure they're going to talk about both. Okay. Are you ready to hear more? Okay. Uh, the use of recreational drugs. Okay. How about that? The use of drugs by mankind is by no means a new practice. God was well aware of drug use in the lands of Egypt and Canaan. And it talks about warning his people about gall and wormwood. Do you okay. remember that? Why would, why would God make drugs to begin with if he didn't want his people using them? I don't know, but 
he's warning them way back in the Bible. I, I remember gall and wormwood being preached here and there. I, I do. It says something about it being a poisonous plant and related to hemlock. Okay. Which hemlock is poisonous. Yes. I know that. And then um, they're talking about how these plants can cause the users to lose control of their mental faculties. Oh, they high as hell. <laughs> exactly. So then they're starting to talk about the opium poppy, and apparently that's related to wormwood. Uh, Do you know? I'm not sure. Okay. Um, let's see here. Oh, okay. Now, I like this because... Like how the cult always flip flops, like this is good, this is, you know, can't do it, can do it, back and forth. Correct. So it says, please be aware, however, that the use of medication for a genuine medical condition as prescribed by a legitimate physician is acceptable to God. I thought, number one, you couldn't have physicians, and number two, you couldn't have prescriptions. Well, see, they flip flop back and forth. And my one friend, Melody, she was our nurse. And Every feast, um, you know, you're told doctors are bad, prescriptions are bad, you know, you know, go natural, take these oils. And every feast, these new people would come and they would be sent to her and they'd bring their medicines and stuff. And this one old guy, he, um, you know, he had a bunch of medications. One was like heartburn medicine and other assorted things. Just kind of like old people Yeah, stuff. old people shit. And he had one that was a heavy-duty heart medication. Okay. And she flat out told him to not stop taking it until he went home and saw his doctor and discussed the medication. Oh, okay. And this old man's walking away muttering about... He's not understanding because he was just told that doctors and medications are evil, but yet, here, take this prescription, go home, and talk to your doctor about it. Which it, makes absolutely no sense. Right. Well, we all expected him to, you know, find him dead during the feast because people would bring their medications the first couple of days because, you know, new people would go over to the wall of propaganda. Mm-hmm. And, you know, find this pamphlet, uh, that pamphlet or health God's way, or there's other ones that discusses about different things mm -hmm. and, um, they would want to stop taking their meds and Unbelievable. there's certain meds you just can't just right. stop. Right. Um, and you know, some stuff she'd have to tell people, you know, you can't just stop taking this. You have to wean yourself off of it and again she'd have to give the disclaimer of you know when you get home speak to your doctor about it even though you're not really allowed to have doctors right okay right like sure, like i ahead. told you i secretly would take my children when they were like on death's door i would take them to right. the pediatrician that kept us safe that knew what the hell they were doing yes 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 okay so now back to this pamphlet and this is just thrown in here okay the word assassin is derived from the arabic word Hashish, hashashin, which I'm sure I'm butchering it. Which Probably means, a, a mixture of hash and assassin. Yes, which means hashish user. The hashashins were members <laughs> of a secret sect of Muslims who killed Christian leaders during the Crusades, supposedly while under the influence of hashish. You, you realize hashish is like marijuana or any of these other things. They're more likely sitting on a couch with eating the munchies, a, eating a pizza, watching SpongeBob. Come on. Exactly. And it says, are we really to believe that a drug that can lead to murder is really harmless? Yeah. They're talking about the wrong drug. Uh, they are. I mean, if they were talking about meth, crack, coke, you know, all of these hyper ones, it would be different. Um, I know police officers that say that they would much rather walk into a situation where the guy is stoned sitting on the recliner munching on a pizza and the wife is going ballistic. Okay than to walk in on a situation where the guy is drunk out of his mind because that person or, you know, high on these methamphetamines and right. stuff. Because that can be violent. Whereas that's where they're violent. But if you're, you know, smoking stuff, you're you're mellow. And you just want to eat. Munchies. Munchies. Yeah. That, that's like where the joke comes from. Exactly. Because that's what it does. Yeah. That's, uh. that's why Scooby-Doo and Shaggy were always looking for food. Yeah, but the original... Um, oh, they always wanted Scooby Snacks. It's because they were always high. 
In the original, <laughs> in the very original um, Scooby Doo, when they stop and everybody's exiting the van, yeah. The very first one, the back doors open and Shaggy and Scooby come rolling out in a cloud of smoke. Sort of like on Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Do you remember that with Spicoli? Uh, yeah, and they, 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 there was a big uproar about it being a kids' cartoon, and it oh my obviously. God. But yeah, that's why they were. That is, I did not know that's that, why and that's were, like one of my favorite cartoons. Uh, How yeah. did I not know? Come that? on, Shaggy, look at him. Oh well, he's the I, original stoner. <laughs> Come on, Mary Jane's his most favorite name. <laughs> Feeding his dog drugs. Hey, Scooby liked him too. Uh, he did. And says, Please keep in mind that God does not condemn all drugs. But just as we read in God's law, the illicit use of drugs for a recreational or mind altering use is condemned. Okay. So there you are. But yet, Shaggy's going to hell. But, but you know, yeah, in the Bible, there's a talking donkey, and I'm sure that guy had to have been on something. Oh, for a donkey to talk, we're talking like major LSD or something. I, 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 I don't know. But yeah, Shaggy and Scooby are going to be in hell with you because you're a pharmacist. <laughs> That's right. We get to that later on in the pamphlet. Oh, okay. We get to that. See, we, we're redoing this, and I have no idea what we said, what we didn't say. <laughs> Son of a bitch. I can't believe that chunk got lost. It was a good chunk, but Shaggy and Scooby weren't in the that's chunk true. that got we lost. Added that. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh shit. Okay. Now it says, "What about alcohol? What about alcohol? What about it?" Uh, let's see here. Millions of people today believe anything short of total abstinence from any kind of beverage containing alcohol is a sin. Many other people believe that there can never be enough alcohol in their wine cellars or at their parties. Exactly. So who is right? Me. Who is wrong? Me. <laughs> Is it a sin to drink a little wine or a strong drink? It says, God tells us to rejoice at his feasts. God even tells us to use wine or strong drink at his feast, if that is what we want. Not anymore. Well, in 1991, when this was printed. I can't tell you how many people got drunk at Passover. I can't wait to discuss Passover this spring. Was that, like, did you drink a lot? Well, yeah, because, like, you could legally drink in front of everybody. And, of course, we had a pre-party before the Seder meal. So, sort of like a tailgating? Well, yeah, that's when me and all my friends would get together. And, you know, some years we'd go to the salon and get our hair done. It was it was the biggest party of the year. Okay. In the cult. Get your nails done. Get your makeup done. And, you know, we'd, we'd go to somebody's house to get dressed and stuff and dress our kids and touch up and of course that, would, that was the pre-party and then during the Seder meal like you have to drink at least three glasses of wine and at one point you're leaning to the left and drinking what? it and you're leaning to the right and drinking it and it, it's just what I've never heard of that well it's because you're not Jewish or you weren't in the cult and you didn't take part in the Seder meal so it just okay so any any of our listeners that are Jewish and you know about this leaning to the left leaning to the right stuff? and the kids even have a part in it where the elders say something and then the kids recite their own part to it so oh I've never heard of that yeah yeah any of our Jewish listeners please post to Facebook well we got the we have the Seder booklet downstairs I'm sure it's in there and I may have a program down there from an okay actual maybe Seder when meal. it's closer to Passover yeah it'll be this spring it. it's around Easter. Okay. And they used to laugh at all the Christian people because they get it wrong. It's Passover and not Easter. And oh. they and they would pick the wrong day. So, Okie dokie yeah. then. Okay. So now it says drinking and health. Um, most medical doctors agree that wine or beer when used sparingly is beneficial to one's health. In fact, many doctors prescribe beer or wine to their patients. Now, let me just tell you, I've been a pharmacist for over 20 years. I have never received a prescription for beer. Um, well, downstairs in your, in your bathroom where you have all your antique farm pharma, pharmaceutical stuff, there's, there's a prescription for a bottle of whiskey. But that was prohibition. I have like, there were actual prescriptions during prohibition that were written. And brother Bob's friend just came out of the hospital from having an operation. And he sent us a picture of a nurse bringing him a beer because he's an alcoholic and his doctor knows this. And he was prescribed three beers a day while he was in the hospital. Three beers. Wow. Well, I guess, I mean, you can't just, if you're in the hospital, I mean, you could have seizures if you stop drinking. Well, I guess, like, they give you the nicotine patches if you're a smoker. Right, exactly. His only bitch was he drinks Budweiser, and they gave him Bud Light. How dare they? They gave him Bud Light. Well, you know, I guess beggars can't be choosers, right? I, I, I probably, <laughs> I guess. Be sitting, sipping on a beer all day. 
<laughs> okay. Where now, do they keep beer in a hospital? I don't know. That's the so cafeteria. Funny. Maybe I'm, they like send some volunteer all to get it. Is it kept with the prescription medications? I don't know. That's a good question. Find out for me. I'll find, I'll, I'll ask my brother. Okay. He, he's an ear doctor. Maybe he, he'll be like, yeah, we keep the beer for the alcoholics in the fridge. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, my God. So now they're talking about the sin of drunkenness. Okay. It says, it should be obvious by now that God does allow his people to drink alcoholic beverages. However, God does not say, drink while you drive to the feast. Exactly. God does not say, drink until the alcohol inflames you, whatever the hell that is. Okay. God does not say, go to drinking parties, drink a lot, make a fool of yourself, and bring up, bring dishonor to God. Okay. <laughs> So don't go and drink and make a fool of yourself. Like, like you know, dancing or, or hanging over people. and Putting a lampshade on your head. Hey, uh, you know, I wonder if the story got cut out about me trying to get kicked out of the cult. I think, it, I, I have no idea. You're going to have to listen to this after I leave. Oh, I, I have to listen to this whole damn thing. No, you have to retell that story because that's a good one. But what if it's already in the beginning? Then we'll cut it out or people will have to listen to it twice. Okay, I tried my damnedest <laughs> to get kicked out of this place and... I, my last feast there, I knew I wasn't coming back. And I tried so hard to get kicked out. That way, Kenny, you know, just, he couldn't say jack shit. Oh, well, I got kicked out. Sorry. Sorry. I didn't want to, but they got kicked out. They got kicked out. But um, rum is my drink. And I was I was Love walking rum. around the feast grounds with a bottle of rum, drinking straight out of the bottle, screaming stuff about the leader and offering the bottle to the guards to drink <laughs> and... <laughs> And at one point, I guess I was getting really out of control and they were, they were, you know, telling stories. You know, I'm so confused on what we, what we have in the first 20 minutes and what we don't. I mean, did I tell about the crazy lady that beat the door with the tent peg? I mean, here I am walking around the feast ground screaming like a loon. I don't think you did, but I wish we had video of that. But yeah, I ended up uh, escaping through uh, the one corner and going to my friend Annette's and we drank the rest of the bottle and I was escorted back. I'm surprised you had any left. It was a whole fifth. (laughs) Come on. I may like to drink, but I don't think I could drink a whole fifth. You're not that bad. No. Okay. Oh my God. So wait, they have this little cartoon in here. Okay. Okay. There's little drawings and it says... With the first drink or so, the drinker becomes relaxed and maybe talkative, even if he is normally reserved. Okay. Okay. That's usually if you're on cocaine, not drugs. I mean, alcohol, I mean. Well, it could be alcohol, too. Okay. It could be alcohol, too. Okay. Well, we'll go with any type of mind-altering. Whatever. Well, actually, alcohol is a depressant. Yeah. So any kind of mind-altering. Okay. Mind-altering stuff. Okay. As one drink follows another, he is apt to become more assertive. His reflexes may now be rather sluggish. And they show him, like, knocking his martini over. Oh, that's alcohol abuse. It is. Still later, the drinker may have a feeling of extreme exhilaration, or he may be a prey to utter depression. Beer muscles. So I look, the guys, like, fell over at the bar. He's sleeping on the bar. <laughs> Finally, acute intoxication sets in. The drinker may lurch, and, may lurch away, mumbling confusedly, or may pass out. And there he is on the table. He's passed out. Okay. <laughs> so that's the cult's lesson on what happens when you go to a bar and you drink too much. You pass out on the bar. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So it says, one must always be in one's right mind in order to resist the adversary. When one is drunk or under the influence of recreational drugs, one is definitely not in one's right mind and not capable of resisting Satan. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, when you drink, you're, you're, you're pulling demons in anyway. You know that. Well, yeah, that's the whole, like, demon bells, whatever, right? Okay, now they're going to talk about drugs and sorcery, which I love when they talk about sorcery. Okay. Um, Let's see here. So mind-altering drugs are a type of sorcery, right? I'm supposing so. Well, you were the one in the cult. (laughs) (laughs) And then it says here, because they always relate pharmacy to sorcery. Okay. Okay, and so they have the word... It looks like it's Greek because they have some Greek letters after it. Pharmakos. Okay. It's an adjective signifying devoted to the magical arts. Oh, that's right. You're a wizard. That's right. It's used as a noun, a sorcerer, especially one who uses drugs, potions, spells, enchantments. 
In sorcery, the use of drugs, whether simple or potent, was generally accompanied by incantations and appeals to occult powers, with the provision of various charms, amulets, etc. Um, see, they're designed to keep the applicant or patient from the attention and power of demons, but actually to impress the applicant with the mysterious resources and powers of the sorcerer. All right, then. So then they're just talking about how the recreational drugs are a worship of Satan. Do we even know what's on the tail end of this that we actually Oh my God, caught? you're not even paying attention. I'm to paying me. attention, but we're up to 50 minutes and I don't know how much is left on that tail end. No, I know what we have there. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm paying attention to you. It says, uh, let's see here. It is not a sin to use certain drugs or chemicals if it is done for a genuine medical condition and in the amount prescribed by a legitimate physician, which again, there we go with the doctors are okay and the drugs are okay. Uh, yeah. Back and forth, back and exactly. forth. Exactly. The scriptures do not condemn all drug use. We need to be very careful if we do not take any medic medication that we do not deceive ourselves and allow our minds to become clouded by taking drugs for pleasure's sake. Okay. And I, you know, with all of the oils and everything that they sold, it's like, what dif what's that different? Then, you know, you're still using something for your sickness. Or your well, ailment. it is. It's like you, you, you have an ailment, whatever that may be, and you're taking something for it right. to help make it better. And so oil, what's the difference? Uh, pollen, if it's, uh, right. What's the difference whether it's an seed. oil or it's something from like a pharmaceutical company? Right. You're still taking something to make it, quote, better. I guess we were all sorcerers back then. I guess so. And it says, God tells us that recreational drug users and drunkards will not have a part in his kingdom. Nope. So here it says, we know drugs will not be thrown into the lake of fire. People will. Right. Got that? Okay. Therefore, do they take all the drugs up to heaven for the good people to finally get to do them? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's Where do they dispose of them? Maybe they just evaporate. Why did God make drugs in the first place? I don't know. Maybe you're supposed to resist them. Ooh. I don't freaking know. Therefore, the word sorcerer is not referring to the drugs, but to the people who use and sell drugs as having their part in the lake of fire. So I am I'm playing part of the lake of fire. Yes. You're poisoning people. I'm poisoning people, and I'm a sorcerer. You're, you're a sorceress. Sorceress. And a witch. You sell poisons to people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be thrown into the lake of fire. The drugs where, won't be, but I will be. Where you will burn eternally, and you will scream forever as the flames lick your skin. All because I'm helping people with their medications. Yes. How dare I? I'm telling you. <laughs> I mean, God lays out these specific things, Laura. You just read in that pamphlet, and it has to be true because it's written. It has to be true. It has to Absolutely. be. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So you might want to rethink your profession. You might want to repent and go to the cult and tell them you've been doing and evil start all, these all years. over. Yes, I, I can give you a couple of names. I can sell you a couple of shitty little trailers. <laughs> you know. Yeah, give give me those names and numbers, please. <laughs> what the hell? Well, that is all that is in the pamphlet. Um, Do you have anything else? Did you have another pamphlet or a paper? No, nope, that was it. Oh, the really? drinking drugs doing it was one of them. Drinking drugs and doing it. And then the one with a pretty little artwork of all the illegal drugs on the front was the second one. We gotta find the doing it book. I know. But nobody has anything. Drinking anymore. drugs and doing it. Everybody basically had a burn party and everything's gone except like Brandon kept some of his music. Um, I would love to be able to play some of that. I have it on my phone. So. We gotta figure a way. Um. Uh, we're so technologically inept. Anyway, hopefully Danny and them will be able to enlighten us later. He's going to be sorry he asked. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Danny, you're going to be so sorry you said that you would help us. But, um, God, yeah, I just, I wish the cult would have stayed like it was back in the early 90s. It when was, everyone was just having a good time. We were all having a good time. And... Just so much liquor. I think there was probably 30 or 40 bottles of assorted different liquor in the trailer that I left there. Because, of wow. course, I'm not hauling, you know, 30 or 40. Right. I mean, we had some expensive stuff, stuff I didn't drink, uh, through fru stuff for me and my friends, you know, like pucker. Remember pucker? Mm -mm. Was it an apple? Was it an apple? I, I mean, I drink a little bit, but not. It was um, 
Sounds like it was some apple type sour well, thing. They had like sour apple and they had a couple different flavors, but okay. it was for like doing lady shots, you okay. know, and but yeah, and the amount of drunkenness, I mean that when you ask, you know, ask your child if they've ever seen anybody, you know, walking around drunk, uh, there was a lot of that going on. <laughs> so yeah. So there you go, guys. I and apparently they're 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 teetotalers now and drinking the non fermented grape juice at Passover. But it says in that pamphlet that you're not supposed to do that. I, I guess they probably printed a new pamphlet. I bet. Like I said, that one is probably one of the could be one of the original ones that from ninety one from ninety one when yeah. Kenny's dad sent it to him, and like they change they change stuff here and there and everywhere you know what you can do today you can't do tomorrow oh well we we found out you can't do that anymore and alcohol gives people joy so you know i mean they suck the joy out of everything out there suck the joy right out right Take out that alcohol away i bet you there's still closet drinkers out there oh there's closet drinkers everywhere really there's got to, come on. I bet you're a closet drinker and you just don't let anybody know. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I see all them liquor bottles in your pantry. Yeah, do you blow the dust off of them? They've been there for God knows how long. Yeah, yeah I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I did. Um, I, I can tell you a lot of people there made their own wine. Oh. And that was something to share, you know, during the feasts. Um... Everybody, kind of, we kind of shared a lot of shit until you couldn't do that anymore. Because of DNA. Uh, well, not even that. Um, like, my chocolate business was because I was selling so much chocolate to people in the cult and from out of town. Because if you live up here in Pittsburgh, you're going to buy 10 or 20 pounds of chocolate from me before you leave. So you can eat chocolate, you and your family oh, will have chocolate right. when you come back. And you're not going to get it again until you come back to the feast. And they saw how much money I was making, so of course... Oh, and we can't have that. It had to go through them. Right. Do you know what I mean? And that's what they did with everything. If they saw a moneymaker, they grabbed the reins, you know? I still wonder how much he's making at the Young Living Oils, because that... Oh, that's a racket. That pyramid scheme started there probably back in 95 or 96, Mm -hmm. Or maybe even 97. I don't remember. But, yeah, the oils were all the rage. And I'm sure they still use them. So. No, if they're not allowed to use medicine, I'm sure they do. Um, Right? Some of the stuff in the natural cures do work, which I didn't understand. Are you just supposed to pray to God that you get better? Well, some people, unfortunately, believe that. Like, a lot of the strict Christians do. Yeah. But my thing my is... Kid, yeah, your kid falls down the steps, and they're bleeding profusely from the head, and you're just going to pray over them and not take them to an emergency right. room? That sucks. Right. It totally sucks. And it's like, well, hmm, if they're going to think that way, maybe they should think that, hmm, you know, I don't know, maybe God had the doctors go to medical school so they could freaking help them? Well, see, I asked my counselors about this, because... There were so many natural cures and oils, and they had their own, here here I'm doing the air quotes, health food store. Oh, geez. um, Where they sold the butter, the milk, um, honey. They got honey by the truckload, because we all had to eat honey. And my God, the shit that they sold. And I even went to my counselors, and I'm like, how is this any different than going... To a doctor or something. You're still taking something right. to help something. Yes. And, you know, even, like, if you went to a dietitian or something, you can't do that because they're a doctor. Oh, jeez. No, they're not. <sighs> well, this is... I'm just playing devil's advocate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I had to go to a dietitian when I, when I was pregnant with my second son because I was... What's that called when you're diabetic? Gestational diabetic. Yeah. And they actually sent me to a dietitian for a two-hour course of, here's what you can eat for the next seven months. Ugh. And let me tell you, it sucked. I bet. And I, I, I had my bag of candy waiting because as soon as that kid came out, I was eating a <laughs> chocolate bar. <laughs> yes. Yep, yep, yep. As soon as he come out, I, woo, chocolate bar, chocolate bar. And I'm guessing that's about it for today. Do you today. have anything else? Oh, I always got other shit, but we'll have to save it for another day. Okay, because I'm done with the pamphlets about drinking and drugs. 
Are you going to do drinking and drugs? Am I going to do drinking and drugs? Yeah. No. Well, you're going to be drinking I'll Friday. I'll drink Friday, yeah. I'll have my gin and tonic. Okay, I'll bring you some coffee beans because, you know, caffeine's a drug. Oh, exactly. Chocolate-covered coffee beans, no less. Oh, that sounds really good. <laughs> that, that sounds really good. Keep you up for days. I could use those in the middle of the week. You could as a morning snack. Exactly. A bag of chocolate covered coffee beans. Nice. That sounds really good. I'll make them for you. All right. Do you prefer caffeinated or uncaffeinated? Half caffeinated. What the hell's you what's the use of like uncaffeinated? I don't know, the same use as people have for non alcoholic beer. I don't see the point in it. Well I don't understand the point of decaf. I really, really don't. I don't see the point in non alcoholic beer. But that's another whole story. That's there. a whole different episode, whole right? Whole <laughs> different episode. Um, well, guys, as always, we're out of time. We didn't think we hardly had anything, and here we are, just babbling on again. Yeah. And hopefully, we will see a bunch of you this Friday night. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody that comes out. Um, me and Laura are going to be there a little bit early, so we can grab something to eat and yeah. a couple drinks beforehand. <sighs> yep, yep, yep. You'll be chugging your milk only during dinner. Okay. You make fun of me all the time. Oh, come on. Everyone's laughing at you and your jug of milk. That's funny. It's not funny. I, but the looks I get while well, I'm walking down the street with it, and they're just looking at you like, what? <laughs> Gee, I can't imagine why. What's the difference between carrying iced tea, lemonade, or... No, you're right. You're absolutely right. A big 32-ounce right. Coke. You're absolutely right. That's why it's still funny for my some reason. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you're right. What is? It's a beverage. There is no difference. But for some reason, it's funny. Uh, you all laugh at me. I don't really know. Oh, but shit. we love you. I know. I love all you guys, too. And, um, guys, if you're feeling not there with it and needing to get out, um, gosh, I, I, Laura, there's not enough hours in the day. You know that? I know. Um, I had something happen this week, and it's okay, but, um, uh, something's always happening. And I didn't get to do my research and shit that I wanted to do, but that's okay. But we have okay. an episode that's okay. It's always okay. Because, I mean, okay. even if you look back, the worst crap in your life, it ended up being okay. You it know? is what it is, and it will pass. Yeah, you're you're correct about that. So, guys, until next time, drink and do drugs. No, no. No, it's, no, 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 no. No. Drink Don't drugs. Don't drink and do drugs. No. Drinking no. drugs and doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I think we got our title, Drinking Drugs and Doing It. We got our title. I'm Laura. Uh, this is Deb, and this has been another episode of I Got the Hell Out, and we'll talk at you next week. Bye. Bye, guys.